Hello! I'm Hayley, welcome to my channel. Tonight, I'm going to be starting a new book. Um, I don't know how much reading I'm going to get in, but I thought I would come on here and talk to you. I am starting tonight the African Myths and Legends. It just general editor is JK Jackson. Apparently it's this edition is a collector's edition. And I'm like, good to know, but who wrote this? So this is a flame tree, flame tree collector's edition. I think it's beautiful. I recently bought this one and three others of different mythologies. And I'm gonna be getting through them slowly, slowly, slowly. And I just thought I would start with a few, you know, an introduction and few of the stories in here while I'm waiting for my F1 race to start. So basically, we're just getting the basic de- Oh, I thought the race had started. <laughs> we're getting in the basic details behind African beliefs in the sense that we're talking about how storytelling and like passing on, verbally passing on fables was such like a huge um, thing in the culture, obviously, in most cultures as well. But what I find interesting here is that they're talking about like a supreme god and the deities. Now, it was believed that the African people had no concept of god, but that's because um, of the like polytheistic nature of African traditional religion. It was like the absence of monuments. Um, towards a supreme being made led people to believe that they didn't believe in one god but the truth is that they believed that um where does it say here um they believed that he was too big to live in or be contained by any house built by human hands so there was a belief that god was too powerful to be approached casually by mortals or even be like held in a place of worship that something for so long was a misconception, which is really not true. They do believe in a supreme god, but they also have a lot of deities. I was under the belief that they just had like multiple different gods and not one specific god. Um, yeah, see it says there's a pantheon um, comprising at least 400 gods, which I understand. I don't know if, like obviously I'll read more about it and we'll find out more. I was under the belief that there was so many like um, deities and like lesser gods, lesser gods I say, in, um, because of how many like tribal stories would be passed about and how many different um, like deities would be worshipped for different groups of people. But maybe not so much on that. I'm not 100% sure. This is like very. Obviously, I've only read like the basic introduction, so we're gonna like keep reading more and more, and I'll start learning more and more. But my thoughts on this are one, I never know how to like pronounce anything, so I'm gonna find it really difficult to talk about specific deities and specific stories because I'm not gonna know how to pronounce things. And I have realized that I'm going to need to do a lot more research than just this, which I already knew that, but this has just verified it. Now I've started reading this, I'm just really, really excited. I'm going to go watch F1 now. Hello, I'm back. Um, I think last time I spoke to you, I was started uh, my African myths and legends, and I haven't gotten very far. I sat outside one time, read a chapter, and most of the time I sit like here before bed and read a bit. But before I sit down and I start reading that for tonight, I wanted to come on here and talk to you about a book that I finished between starting this video and now. I have finished, right? And that is of course, Roses by Bethany C. Morrow. I started this book for my like mermaid theme vlog, and then I, um, you know, mentally and physically became very sick and couldn't bring myself to like physically read a book. And I still struggle, but this is something I'm proud to say 
um, we got through it. We got through it. Uh, this was partially physical, partially audiobook, um, which I still want to work on physically reading more than not audiobooking and physical. But baby steps. We're taking our time and we're not forcing ourselves to read. We're reading for fun. That is what I'm trying to get into this noggin. Now, for those of you who want to know, um, this is the second book uh, to a duology. I'm not sure if they're going to be releasing more. But the first book is Sirens. And that's why I was going to read this for the Mermaid vlog. Um, it's about... What is it called? A siren song, I think is what it's called. Yeah, a siren song. And this one, A Chorus Rises. It kind of... They go together. Anyway. Um, you know, hijinks ensue. And this book is from the other person's experience. Like, perspective uh, with the aftermath of the first book. Um, what was her name again? Naima Bradshaw is her name, and she is an Aloko. Um, I'm under the impression that Aloko is a African creature, like based in African mythology. I'm gonna have to do some more research for that. Um, and I finally sat down and finished it. I honestly, I kind of this is bad of me to say. But I feel like I didn't need this book. This, you know, when I like sat down and started reading it, I was like, you know, I don't really know why I picked this up. And finishing it, I still kind of feel the same way. Like I understand why I, why it exists, um, and I believe it goes well with the first book. Like they do definitely complement each other. But for me, like this, the first book wasn't even really my thing. Like, and you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's a good book and that's why I, I, you know, was like, oh yeah, I'll keep it and I'll read this one because the book's good, but it isn't really for my taste or like, you know, what I gravitate towards. So I like should have known that this wouldn't have been like highly rated, you know, but I don't feel bad for reading it. Um, but I think in future, if I'm going to like reread them, I probably will only reread the first book, not both. You get what I'm putting down? Not bad, but not for me. It's hard to talk about what this book is without like spoiling the parts of the first book, but basically so whatever, ha like the thing that happens in the first book this is dealing with the aftermath, which um, actively affected this main character here. She's beautiful, by the way. Um, she is a social media influencer and is currently being kind of ostracized by her community and the outside community. And this is a, really about um, women coming together, black women specifically. I can't say this is about all women this is about black women specifically coming together because one person is being used to be pit against another group of people when in reality they're just being racist you know people like to use um minorities as a reason to sort of pit other minorities against each other um kind of as scapegoats instead of dealing with the root of the issue but this i know i see as a good commentary on uh, how people sort of use scapegoats how people use specific stories and specific instances to um pigeonhole certain groups of people yeah i don't know where else my thoughts going <laughs> I think it did well in doing that and I think this is good for younger readers. Um, it adds a little bit of realistic commentary in a fictional world. Um, the concept of having black these black women be specific mythical creatures along with their experiences of being black women is very uh, specific to their stories, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're different 
and the same and I think that's important to acknowledge and that also is realistic with real life now when it comes to different types of women they're different but they are have shared experiences and they also have different experiences and that what what makes people important and individual I don't know where I'm going with this I'm tired and I'm rambling now but I just want to say that I enjoyed this book and although it's not for me I think a lot of young women will enjoy this book so yeah we finished this and we are now going to continue with this some of the things in here are like quite interesting you know like there's explanations behind why we can't touch the sky anymore or like the sky as in like an a higher god um you know they kind of interchangeable <laughs> at this point um like there's you know i think it was a, a a woman hits god in the eye with a pestle um and him in like i, I don't want to say anger but in retaliation he uh takes the sky with him and so we can't just like grab up and touch you know um and there's like another story where like this like this dude like wants to have the moon like he just wants the moon so his father like helps him engineer this like machine thing that can pluck the moon from the sky but like it fails and it's supposed to like represent like little stories like that they represent different things so like that one in the moon one for example is supposed to emphasize like um humility and like good parenting like you don't want to over coddle your children and you want to have boundaries you, you can't give your kids everything you want to but you you can't and i think that's quite interesting in a way to be able to like that there's specific stories like that um i don't know it's just interesting and like in another like for example with the sky thing um, in another myth, there's this piece here. Let me see, where's the page? In another myth, humans were immortal until a young maiden disturbed the cycle of rejuvenation and restoration by bumbling on a sacred ritual. Um, that sucks. But my thing is, is that I don't even know how to talk about it, you know? Like, I didn't really talk much about the Greek. I didn't really talk much. I think I spoke more about Greek than I did Egyptian, but because those things, like I felt like, you know, when you like know something a little too closely that you don't even know what to talk about anymore because like in your mind, everyone knows that, but they don't. <laughs> I'm like regretting that I didn't talk more about the things that I enjoyed because like, but anyway. Now you're just seeing me learn all these new things. It's so exciting. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> Good night. Hello. I have the big CV. So, now that I'm sniffly and sick and with only a mild symptoms, I am going to try and read. My sinus pain has definitely, like, died down a lot. Um... I slept way better last night than I did the night before. So that's fun. <laughs> it's about time, considering like two years, you know, we've been in and out of lockdown, worried about couldn't, like getting the virus. And now that I have it, I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm just lucky I'm not experiencing really bad symptoms. I'm still reading. <clears throat> My African myths and legends, I'm still reading this. Uh, I haven't really been reading it a lot. I'm getting annoyed. Well, I'm not annoyed. I like the way that this is laid out because, like, they have different sections for, like, oh, no. for Central Africa and West Africa and, you know. But this really is not enough pages to develop... Or really dive into anything like it's because of the fact like because of how rich and diverse the story the these stories are it's like why would you only leave like two pages three pages for West Africa why would you only have three pages for Central Africa and yet you have so much for Greek mythology 
when like really all that you showed me could have been done in a few pages like it just goes to show how clear it is that we've been documenting more popular um, mythologies and not developing these like such rich and diverse stories um, I'm sure because I've only really read a few I can tell you for certain that we do not dive into enough when it comes to um, Oceania or even America like I feel like there isn't a lot because like this is so this is the Americans which is a little bit thicker than Africa like the difference actually they're pretty much the same yeah it's just a little bit thicker like all of these other um, mythologies are around about the same width apart from the first apart from the Greek which is just so chunky like that's ridiculous for Greek in comparison to the others um, and that's my current criticism of this I do like the way that it's laid out that it's like you know this is for West Africa this is for Central like I do like that that's something that this doesn't have like this um, has so we've got creation myths um, deaths and creation death myths and stuff origin death and the aftermath and they have like so I have this one saved the chameleon how death came into the world from the Zulu people of South Africa like it does tell you where more specifically does these stories come from which I like how this does it um, and it divides it so that one we had you know creation origin death and afterlife and then we've got animal stories and fables and then we've got wit and wisdom like that's how this one's divvied up I kind of wish that they were a bit like somewhere in the middle of that I'm getting messages like crazy uh, but you get what I mean right like I like the way that this is laid out but I wish there was more information and I like how much information and specifics are in this but I kind of wish they were laid out a bit differently just so that I could visualize whereabouts these stories are coming from so like why the t because by the time I get to like um the tortoise and the elephant which is from Kenya I'm like, okay, that's from Kenya, and the, but I've forgotten the creation story from Kenya. You know what I mean? I just... That's the thing that's annoying me about the way this book is laid out, is that, you know, I can't piece together the creation story and this, like, animal story, or this, you know, heroes, gods, and monsters story. I can't, like, link them clearly in my brain. Hello, I'm back again. I was planning on sitting down with like my full face of makeup and like really sit down and do like a talk with you but um cannot be bothered waiting for like tomorrow to do it so we're just gonna do it now get it out of the way get it done with um so during this vlog I read the second book to A Song Below Water which was A Chorus Rises I've already spoken to you about that so we're not talking about it now um I read the uh, um, I read the like African myth section of the myths and legends. Um, that one didn't really go into anything new or anything more interesting that I want to talk about. So I just want to say I finished it, whatever. <laughs> and I did end up finishing this. Now I w thought I'd already spoken to you about some bits and bobs about like the stories that I liked and like, just stories that I remembered that stood out to me but I didn't so we're going to do that now I'm going to talk to you about some of the ones that I have sticky noted to remember uh, this one didn't talk about what Alokos were but I have been watching other YouTube videos about different mythologies different creatures and I'll link them down below um, so an Aloko is a kind of dwarven feet, like creature. They um, live in the woods and they eat human flesh, specifically young women. Uh, 
which is fun to know, I guess. <laughs> bit, bit more creepy than I thought they were going to be, but that's what they are. They're like little woodland creatures that eat flesh. <laughs> now, I did want to come on here. Let's see, what's the first one that I have bookmarked? Oh, I have, um, in the introduction, they mention a lot of death myths, and I have a, a section of that uh, sticky noted, but I don't have the original story sticky noted in here, so it's not um, super developed, it's quite quick. Alright, so the one that I, the little small introduction about death was something that I had noted down, and that one was about a young man who goes and lives with a giant and the giant is it a giant or is it a cyclops i can't remember anyway um he goes and lives with this giant for a hot minute he is starving and his family's starving so he's doing it for food and he goes on vacation after doing such a good job in helping out this giant the giant's like bring me someone else to do your job while you're gone so he lets his brother like takes his brother to um fill in help out while he's gone and then he comes back and his brother's not there and he's like where's my brother and blah, blah, blah. um and it, it he discovers that the giant actually ate him and a few other people as well and so he goes all angry angry and kills the giant and uses a shaman to resurrect the other people that the giant has eaten. Um, and in that process, he's starting to feel quite guilty about the fact that he's killed this giant. So he, like, proper, poor, like, tries to resurrect the giant on... But instead only resurrects one of the eyeballs. And it's said that every time this eye blinks is when someone dies. And I'm like, that was super interesting. I really like the idea of that. I don't have where that story is from because I didn't note down the specific story. I noted down the like introduction where that was mentioned. So I'm feeling kind of shitty about that. <laughs> but another story, I really liked the creation story from the Zulu people. Uh, so we have the chameleon, how death came to the world. That one was also quite interesting. Where am I? Um, they want that the, the the like gods wanted men to be immortal. That was like after creating the world, after creating all the bits and bobs, they were like, oh, we're gonna make them immortal. Um, so he sent the chameleon on a little mission to spread that note, and then not long after he decided, actually, we're gonna leave it up to fate. So we're gonna get a gecko to go deliver and the opposite message. Um, and be a lot of these stories reference how slow chameleons are and how, um, I suppose they do discuss their wisdom as well, but it is common theme that they are sh um, slow and the gecko gets there first. And that is why men aren't immortal. It's because it was like a mission between the two, gecko and the chameleon. I don't know. I have that one saved even though that one's not, completely like the most interesting i really like chameleons as animals and i always have so i think anything with chameleons i'm instantly like wow i should take note of that <laughs> um i did have my favorite creation myth in here but now i can't find it we have why dead people are buried that one was a mix up between a dog and a sheep so that's all fun well and good I might have taken the sticky note out, so I'm going to have to try and remember it off the top of my head, which isn't fun. What else is this one that I have sticky noted down? Oh, we have one about um, dead babies and a shaman saving them in the water. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Um, well, that's fun. I don't remember which specific story this one came from. But I do did really enjoy, I think it's the, from the Eurubula people, I think so. And I really liked the creation myth of mankind. Um, I also like the creation myth of the Earth as well. That one, the creation of the, the world, um, of Earth, was um, 
I can't remember names because I can't look at it, but he basically is living up in the sky. He's living his best life. And then he comes on down with a chicken, a, like, he gets a chain made so he can, like, linger over the chain. Um, I think he had some wheat, some seeds, um, a chicken, yeah, seeds, a chicken, and a black cat. Um, he uses this gold rope that he got made, or chain, not rope, and comes on down, sprinkles the seeds around, and lets the chicken kind of scratch and set them. And wherever the seeds land is where earth, um, and, like, land was created. And then he just lives his good old life, um, with some with the black cat like he lives in chills um and the mankind creation is that he was drinking um wine i can't think of words he was drinking the wine and thought i'll start making these little clay creations he starts making them sober and then as he gets hotter and hotter he starts drinking more and as he starts drinking they get a little bit more misshapen a little bit deformed um and then he, like, in his drunken state, is like, please create life into these beings. Please let them. I'm lonely. So they start to, you know, function like us humans do. Um, each looking different and moving differently. And he notices some of the more um, disabled ones struggling. And he kind of curses himself and he's like, I'm never going to drink this wine again. And it's said that he, like, spent the rest of his being, well, not his, maybe not the rest of it, considering that he's not, um, mortal. But his, he was really, like, dedicated to helping the people that he, um, created that were disabled. And he knew that they could live a longer and more fulfilling life. And that's what I got out of that story. And I read that when I was heckin' emotional and I almost cried. I don't know why. Sometimes you just cry for no reason and that was one of those. <laughs> and there's like quite a few in here that were quite interesting. Uh, there was like a woman with two skins and yeah, interesting, 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 interesting. I found, read more about, in the myths and legends, I had like a section about shamans uh, from different cultures, not just African. So I was like, oh, let's read a little bit more about magicics. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, I really enjoyed being able to read more about these things. I do wish that I read more about creatures because for me, the creatures, monsters are way more interesting than anything else but i didn't get to read any of those in these um i just watched a lot of youtube videos on them and i definitely want to pick up like a myths and monsters um sort of story that encompasses a lot of other cultures as well we will see what i can find i'm going to keep my eyes open for that anyway i'm sorry if the heater was annoying you i'm not really sorry uh, have a nice day and thank you for watching this vlog. Bye bye.